the, through all the instruments. So I'm pretty uh, sure that he is working on us from this very first time. We are here for him and his grace works on us. And this is true. So I am 27 years old. I am a missionary of Shalom Life Community. I don't know if you know the difference between life community, covenant community. It's pretty hard, actually, I'd say. But and maybe next, in the, 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 after we can uh, uh, go deep in this, in this subject. But uh, I'm a missionary, a full-time missionary. So I left my own life in Brazil, my plans, my projects, my family, my girlfriend, all I had to um, enjoy, to join this path. You know, I discovered my vocation in the deep of my heart. I discovered that God was calling me to live a shalom charism. So I entered in the community. Um, I've, lived, I've, I've, I've lived like this for six years. So I've been in Sao Paulo as a missionary after another city close to my city, which is Fortaleza in Brazil. And after that, the community sent me here uh, to Rome. And so I've been here for five years, for four years. So, uh, Sergio, I feel myself almost Italian. Thanks, God. And uh, yes, I really like here. And I'm a, mis I'm, I'm a seminarian as well. So I'm studying to be a priest. And uh, I just finished my first year of theology. I still have two more years of studying, of studies, okay? Yes, this is a brief introduction. Uh, I was born in a Catholic family, okay? And uh, so I use it to go to the church. I use it to join activities on the, on the church. I'd say I was Catholic, a normal Catholic. So I prayed with my mom, especially before sleeping, but, um, um, until I get 15 years old, I've never, I had never done an experience with God's love. I just heard about this law, you know, in the catechism, preparation for the first communion and these stuff. I've studied in a Catholic school in Brazil. So theoretically, it was pretty okay for me. And in my mind, it was everything clear. God loves me. Okay. God loves me. I do believe in that. But I, I had never tasted it. As we talked about the flavor of the ice cream, I had never tasted the flavor of God's love. So um, when I was 15 years old, so, to, so yes, now 12, uh, 12 years ago, I was invited to join a camps, which is a kind of ret retreat for the young people. Um, that Shalom promotes in my city. And uh, I went there. I went there. It was from 14th to 19th July 2008. I remember as today, just like today. And uh, I arrived there. We were about 1,000 guys. Uh, I knew that it would be a spiritual Catholic camping but I could not imagine what would happen with me in that moment, in that occasion. And uh, so once I got, once I, 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 I got there, I arrived there, I started to feel a lot of fear for God. I need to be honest. I was afraid of God, especially when I was hearing the prayer in tongues and these strange ways of pray, prayers, you know, and it was so hard for me. And uh, I thought it was something like uh, black magic, or I don't know how to say it in English, but you know, I think you got it. Um, it was hard for me to open up my heart. Actually, I'd say that my very fear was, okay, if I open up my heart to Jesus, I was really afraid of hearing a voice from heaven, which said to me, Victor, leave everything and follow me and be a priest. So I had to leave my, my soccer, my family, my video game, my plans. So in my mind, the imagine that I was creating about God in my mind, it was a kind of fruit, 
you know, something that could damage me, that could uh, uh, bring me bad stuff, actually. Yes. Uh, but day by day in that camping, I was hearing about God's love. I think you heard about this last week or no? The last preaching was God's love or no? Uh, Hainara, could you uh, help me? Yes, yes. It's about yes? Ah, okay, okay. So um, I heard about God's love, I heard about sins and salvation, and especially on the day, during that week, on the day uh, 17th July 2008, at 4 p.m., I decided to open my heart to Jesus, and I felt the flavor, I could taste the flavor of his love for the first time. From that moment on, it was not something theoretical anymore, but something practical that touched the very deep of my heart and of my soul. So it changed. And in that, I remember this as today. It was four, four, a quarter p.m. I was with all the guys. We were, yes, a, a crowd. We are praying with our founder, Moises. Um, and we were asking the Holy Spirit upon us. I was 15 years old. I was afraid, but I decided to open my heart. And in that very moment, I felt a peace and a love that I've never, I had never felt before. My parents could not give me it. My girlfriend that time could not give me that love that I felt in that very moment. So, um, things changed in my life. You know, I started a path on the prayer group, just like you guys here. And after I discovered that God was calling me to go still deeper, and now I'm here as a missionary. So we've heard about God's love last week. What do you remember about God's love? Um, I don't know who, who were here last week. So volunteering uh, freely, who would like to share briefly about last, uh, last meeting? The characteristics, the features of God's love, do you remember? What I can say that I remember is they mentioned God's love was eternal, that it was unconditional, like there's nothing that we can do to make it, uh, to make God love us more or less, like it's, it just is, right? Freely, it's also free. Um, yeah, I think I can remember those three characteristics right now. <laughs> too early in the morning to remember all of them, but not bad great great this one more one more person more features so i have two hypotheses or nobody else were that were here last week or nobody else remember anything <laughs> don't worry <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry about that. So, uh, God's, yes, eternal, unconditional, but the, the, I, I, one of the most, uh, uh, my, favorite, my favorite ones is personal. God loves me. God does not love everybody. God loves me, myself, Victor, which means that he knows my plans, my projects. He knows my past, my, my wounds. He knows everything on me. God's love for me, it's free, free, for free, gratis, for free, which means God's love for me. I do not need to buy it. I do not need to change myself to feel myself beloved by God because he loves me as I am. Of course, I need to change. I need conversion, but this is a consequence of his love. I convert not to get his love because he loves me as I am. So, yes, and the last one is constant, constant, which means God does not uh, wake up on Sunday morning uh, with a bad humor. And so he will treat me um, according to my, uh, to my mistakes. Never. God's love for me is free and it's constant, which means doesn't, uh, uh, never change, never change. 
So yes, just a review, which is so important to go deep and understand sins and salvation. So we've heard about God's love. Now my question is, and I want to, to ask to Steph, Stephanie, Stefania in Italiano, Stefania, I ask to you, I ask for you. Um, so God loves us like this. Why do we suffer? If God's love for us is like this, why do we suffer? Why do bad things happen with us? So I think that that's to uh, help increase our faithfulness to God and to draw closer to him. And so I think it just increases the, the faith um, that we have, faith over fear that you'll get through anything. And I think sometimes um, in the painful times, that's when you find God the most. Um, so I know sometimes it's, you know, it seems kind of counterintuitive, like hard to understand um, but, but it definitely helps, you know, if, if God, if you only saw God's love in the good times, you know, uh, I think, uh, it, it wouldn't be real. It wouldn't be deep. Um, but, but the fact that you can see it through the good and the bad times is, is truly deep. That's great. That's awesome. That's true. We are going to go, we will go deep on this. Okay. First of all, let's start from the creation. God created us with a plan. God created David Panil Panilio, 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 see, Davide, David. Panilio, yeah. Panilio. Panilio. <laughs> yes, from Philippines. He created Stephanie. He created me with a plan, which is a love's plan, a plan of love. He created us for an intimacy with him. Which is, not, which is not a slavery in, in, uh, regarding him, but which is in a very intimacy, love intimacy with him and with our brother, brothers and sisters and with the creation. So when we say that we were created on imagine uh, of the Trinity, no, you know it. On the gospel we can read, we were created on imagine of God. Which, that, what does that mean? We were created able, we are able to love. We are able to love, which is we are able to love the others and we are, are able to receive love. This is very beautiful. What is love? What is love? We are talking about our very deep, okay? Our identity. This is ourselves, human identity. What's love? There is a saint, uh, Elisabetta della Trinità, Elizabeth of the Trinity, which says always that the essence of God uh, is love. That's true. And the essence of love is donation. It's self-giving, giving yourself for the others. So you were created to it. You were created for lo to love, no, out of love. So you were created for give yourself for God himself and for the others. So this is our very identity, no? There is a sentence very beautiful that I really like. You know, think about all the creation, all the things that God created on earth, heavens, at the sea, the ocean, you know, everything. Among everything that God created, there is only one thing which is mankind, which is you that God wants forever. Only one thing lasts forever. What lasts forever? You. God created you, not for this world, not for this time, but he created us forever. He did not create the heavens, the sky, the, the sea, the, I don't know, uh, the Liberty statue. Uh, or the um, Pantheon here in Rome, or St. Peter's Square, great things. But all these things will pass away, no? Will pass by, I think it's better. Will pass by. So the only thing that lasts forever, it's love. So it's our relationship of love, our intimacy with God himself. He created us for this. We can say, um, surely, that God created us 
And we are a masterpiece. We are the masterpiece. You, David, are the masterpiece. You, Sergio, are the capolavoro. You are the masterpiece of God's love, of, of God, no, of the whole creation. And it's beautiful because when we read on Genesis, um, I think in, in English it's not good because the, the translation is not the best one. Maybe we cannot go deep on this. But the, God says, may the uh, light be. I don't, I don't remember the word exactly, but may the light be. No? They may light come out and the light exists. No? May the earth, may the heavens, okay, and it came out and started to exist. Okay. But when he talks about, when the gospel talks about the creation of the human, uh, the you creation, your creation, he says on the first person of plural, on the first person of the plural. So we, let us create the man. Let us create the man, which is Adam. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So there is a very strong, a very uh, 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 clear difference between you and the rest of the creation. God says on the third on the first person of the plural so which means it's a whole it's a whole work of the whole trinity no and it's we can understand like not only the word of god not only his word is creating us as for the light as for the heaven and the and the earth i mean but his hands you know let us create let us let us think about let us form no uh, plasmare in Italiano. Let us, no, let us construct God, the human. So, which, which means love, which means time, no? which means, uh, um, yes, attention of the details. Let us create the human. Let us create Carola. Let us create James. This was, it was our creation different from the rest of the creation very different so uh, um, and um, to start also to talk about sins god did not create sin he did not create the evil one of course not the saint augustine and a lot of the philosophers the, a lot of philo philosophers they say, they say that the, 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 bad, uh, the evil, it's a lack, no? The evil, it's a lack, lack of goodness, lack of good. This is clear. If we can, if we see, if we uh, uh, talk about um, Lucifer, we know Lucifer. We know Lucifer. Who was Lucifer? Was an angel of light, was a creator a good creator of God, isn't it? Yes, good creator. But as for us, the same thing, God gave him and gives us, and gives us every day freedom. This is the key word, gives us freedom. Freedom is a consequence of love. Freedom is, uh, yes, it's a consequence of love. It's not, we could not say, oh God, I love you. You can take away my freedom. I just want you. God cannot, God can do everything. But one thing he cannot do. Just one, just one. Take away your freedom. Take away your freedom. The omnipotence, no? The omnipotence of God uh, cannot Take away your freedom. And this is very beautiful. It makes God still more beautiful, still more powerful, still more love. You know? And so um, the evil, it's a negation. It's when I deny the good. So man was free to live this love that we were talking about last meeting and then the, the beginning of this meet, meeting. Uh, so we are free. And the symbol of this freedom is, on the book of the Genesis, what is the freedom? What is the symbol of this freedom? The tree. 
no? The tree. The tree. You can eat all the fruits, but this one you cannot eat. This is freedom. This one you should not eat, but you are able to eat if you want. Sign of God's love, not sign of God's. Uh, um, Mamma mia, how can I say it in English? Not sign of God's bad, uh, that God is bad, no? God's, uh, yes, God, God's badness, no? Uh, but sign of God's love. It's beautiful also when we read the scriptures that if you take the book of Genesis, the history starts on a, in the garden, no? And in the book of the Apocalypse, you can find another garden. No? And on the middle of the book, if you take a Song of Songs, we can read about a garden. You know? So our life, it's like a, this life in the garden. You know? And um, in the tree, it's the sign. It's the symbol, the sign of our freedom, okay? So is it clear, the, the, the concepts, everything? Is it okay? Even with my bad, bad English and my mistakes, but okay. So let's move on, let's go on. Um, talking about Lucifer, we already told about that he was a morning star and he wanted to be God. He wanted to be God. Actually, this is the very root of all of our sins. Want to be with, like God. The creator wants to be creator. The creator wants to uh, uh, turn the point, no? Uh, and wants to take the place to rubber the place of the creator. This is the problem. This is the problem. Turning the point. You know? So, um, he wanted to be like God, so he rebelled himself against God, as we know, in heaven. So he was um, put out of heavens, and he came to the earth, and we know about the history. Of course, it's a metaphor just to understand. Um, but the truth is, God cannot, uh, Lucifer could not do anything against God. But so, because he cannot do anything against God, he tried to do something against who? Against his masterpiece. Against ourselves. No? This is important. He tries he make, uh, tries to lead us in temptation try to take us away from god just because he cannot do anything against god so he he have chosen uh, uh, we masterpieces of god and uh, so the man was tricked by satan you no know, we were tricked you no know? satan tricked Eve, Eve, with, no, you can eat it. If you eat it, what does this, the, the serpent say, the snake says? If you eat this fruit, you will be like God. If you eat it, you will be like God. This is the problem. This is the problem. Here we can start to understand the root of the sins. No? We want to create human beings. We want to govern the whole earth. We want, to govern, we want to govern our lives. We want to be God of ourselves. This is the very root of our, sign, of our signs. Uh, and the strategy, the, in, nowadays, the strategy of Saturn, I think the best one, in my point of view, it's to make us understand that he doesn't exist. He doesn't exist. Sin, there is no sin. This is a creation of the church. 
this is a creation of the tradition of the church because you you will be slaver you the same thing that the serpent that the snake has done with eve no and um, uh, but he exists indeed as god exists lucifer exists the author of sins the author of badness um, so what's the consequence of that fruit in our lives it's clear the sins so the consequence of sins it's this one i have an example more dynamic so you will not uh, in order to wake you guys up okay do not sleep um here maybe with the camera i don't know if we can do it okay okay here we have this plate okay and we have a plant over here i took in our garden here just before okay this plant is you okay sergio david stephanie okay this plant is you god's love it's like a um a rain it's like a storm okay which reach us and we can feel it no we can feel it okay now you have god's love here i cannot but you can imagine yeah you can almost see we have god's love here but it's a storm it's always always falling down on us always i cannot do it here because otherwise i will get uh, wet everything here what is sin sin it's this it's a kind of umbrella since uh, l'ombrellone sul mare sulla spiaggia sins it's l'ombrella no and god's love is still raining upon us but it's not it's not reaching us anymore this is sins this is sin it doesn't mean that god's love is not here it's here indeed but sins make us blind no we become blind uh, that's why it's so hard sometimes to feel his love to read what he is doing in our lives that's why we need to struggle against all kind of sin no so it bl it blinds us the man was naked we can read no the man was naked which means the man was uh, um, the man in that moment when he realized that he is naked he realized that he is poor he is poor god was preserving men me and you from that but the sin doesn't preserve us from that the sin reveals us how poor we are how bad we are god wants to want it do not eat that fruit he wanted to preserve us but sins does not preserve us so we feel ourselves poor we feel ourselves naked this is the sense of nakedness um what else the man started start to be the judge of what is good and what is bad I know, I say, I can counsel Carola. Carola, you can do it. You can do that. You are intelligent. You have experience, so you can do it. You, you can decide by yourself. We started to be judge of our lives, of everything. The creator started to, to be creator. This is the problem. And we are not able to say some without God what is good and what is bad no without the holy spirit mm, what else the man becomes a slave of sin we became slave no sin a life of sin lead us in a life of slavery slavery um there is a kind of wall a kind of wall wall no the same thing the same example here no kind of wow a kind of umbrella that divided uh, divides us from god um, and the garden look how beautiful is this with the sin the garden becomes a jungle the garden becomes a jungle 
So the garden, the order, the order, the beautiful of the garden, because of the sin, becomes a jungle, disordered. No? Selva in Portuguese. Uh, I don't know how to say it in, in Italian, but a jungle, no? not ordered, not. Um, you can this say is the chaos. Sorry? Chaos, chaos. Chaos, exactly, exactly. A chaos, totally chaos. Yes, yes, thank you. So, and the consequence is selfishness. I know what is good for me. I know what is good for me. I, more and more thinking about me, myself, me, me. This is another root of all our sins. Selfish, selfishness. No, because sins enter the world, we suffer. Because sins enter the world, we cannot lo live love totally. No, totally. But now we are arriving for the conclusion and the great part. Okay, don't worry, it's not only bad things. Um, one last thing about this. Um, it's beautiful because even when the man decided for sin, what happened? He still has a relationship with God. We can see it on the gospel, no? God came at late on the afternoon, was passing, was hanging around the, on the garden, and ask, he asks for the men, where are you? And the men were uh, uh, hidden, no? So, and the man can still have a relationship. The sin, my sins and your sins, they want, they hurt our relationship, but they cannot, they have no power to cancel our relationship with God. This is one of the most important things they can hurt our relationship, but they can never, never, never cancel our relationship with God. We can see it on the gospel. God still has a relationship with mankind, with Adam, with Eve. God came to, okay, and now we, we finally, we reach the great part, okay? Uh, but before we pass now, before we go to salvation, um, just to breathe a little bit. And uh, if someone wants to share something in 10 minutes, I think we finish. Okay, I don't want to bother you anymore. But if, one, if someone wants to share something about sins, want to ask something or want to add something, or, okay? With one minute for that. Feel yourself free. No, no one. <laughs> Just one. Please. Maybe a simple it's my turn. Yeah, you go. Ah. You go. Vai, yeah. Prego, Sergio. Who is talking? Me? Okay. I. It's a tough one because uh, I believe that uh, you touched the point that is uh, the most difficult for me because. Uh, I believe uh, I have chosen uh, now in this period chastity, hopefully for a while, because uh, I was coming from a time where sin was really keeping me very far from God. Even if I got a strong uh, desire of Him, but uh, I believe what you showed before it's a clear image of what happens when uh, 
we sin. Unfortunately, I sinned, and uh, and I didn't have a chance to get confession, and is the most painful <laughs> time in that sense because of the corona, you know, virus restrictions. So, um, yeah. So I, I believe uh, it's just uh, probably as uh, a brother in admission that. Uh, Really, we have to stay away from sins, and uh, the confession is our great, I would say, our weapon in terms of being able to be immaculate again as our Holy Mother. And uh, I feel like uh, I'm very keen to go back to church as soon as possible in order to experience again the this uh, flowing channel of a uh, love of god because uh, it was a sort of you know uh, waterproof barrier so seen uh, as uh, advert action in my life it was probably just sharing my my sinful period so thank you Thank you, Sergio. So now we go finally to finish for the good part and very important, the salvation. No, the, the, um, the, the goal of this meeting, of this talking is not just to put a, a, heavy, um, a heavy burden in our shoulders, no? But no. Um, not, not to accuse us because we are sinners. No, that's why we started with God's love. No, that's why we started with God's love to understand the suffer, our surf, our sufferances, how suffer, uh, the, the, how why why we struggle, the wall between uh, we and God, and now the salvation. First of all, only the Holy Spirit can convince us about our sinful conditions, okay? Only the Holy Spirit, it's beautiful. Because in that week of that camping that I told you that I joined when I was 15 years old, in these meetings that we are doing, this path with the Holy Spirit, which, which is yes, a path with the Holy Spirit, we have the opportunity of re recognizing ourselves needy, sinful, and only the Holy Spirit can do it. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal us how sinful we are, not to accuse us, no, no, but especially to make us taste the, the flavor of God's mercy. And now talking about mercy and um, salvation, the man, me and you, after sin, Adam, Eve, after the sin, could not do anything by himself. Anything by himself. So here, the first point, we are not saved by ourselves. If we study the history of the church, maybe you have studied as well, we can see a lot of heresies during the history of the church. And a lot of heresies are I can save, I can be saved by myself. This is not true. We are saved by grace. As Sergio was, um, was sharing with us before, it's a, 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 it's a grace. The confession, the mercy, it's a grace. No, not by ourselves. Of course, we need to make an effort. Of course, we need to, to struggle with all our strength, but we need to struggle to receive a grace. We need to, to struggle to put away that waterproof barrier in order to receive the graces from the sky, no? The, the storm which is um, falling down on us. So, yes, so he, the man cannot do anything by himself. The beauty of accepting God's mercy, God's mercy, I recognize myself mercy, a, a, a sinner. So I open up my heart to receive his mercy. 
salvation was God's initiative. When we are talking about salvation, we are talking about Jesus on the cross. Jesus on the cross to save us. The cross was my place. Who, would be, who should be uh, there in that cross? Me, David, Carola. It was our pray, place, the place of the sinners. But we can joy, we can rejoice because God himself took our place, as we know, you know, took our place. And not that moment, God's love it's, goes further. Not only sending his son and saving us. If we take the uh, Old Testament, the whole re- history of the people of Israel, no? the whole history of the people of God, it's a um, work of mercy. And work of mercy. No? So Jesus, uh, God was working, preparing ourselves. And he creates Mary and he sends he sent his son, he saved us. So, one of my favorite sentences, God's vengeance is love. God's vengeance is mercy. God's vengeance is not our vengeance. Our way of, yes, making vengeance. No, God's vengeance is mercy. Mercy. Ah, so you have seen, you have eaten, you have eaten the fruit that I that I ordered you to do not eat. So I will. Uh, so you need now to to taste my vengeance, and my vengeance is love. It's not accusing us. It's not accusing us. On the prophet Isaiah, there is a a, a part, some sentence, very beautiful. That Jesus is talking about his people, and uh, Jesus, I'm sorry, God is talking about his people, and he, spe- he speaks like, so you have done like this. He speaks like in, in terms of uh, um, accusing, no? So you have done like this, you have uh, betrayed me, you have um, adored other gods, you have done this, you have done this. So now you need to, uh, now I now receive my vengeance. In my vengeance is mercy. In my vengeance is love. No. My brothers and sisters, this is the, our only reason to rejoice. Our only reason to be Catholics of uh, joy, of hope. Because this is the most honest truth. God's love for us. The sins has no power upon us, upon us anymore. Not at all. God saved us. And I've seen, I've seen again, I've seen again, I've seen again. God's love is, God's vengeance is always mercy. Always mercy. If I repent myself, of course, God is not uh, stupid. If I repent myself, if I'm honest with him and with myself, God will always forgive me. God saved me already. I need just to welcome this salvation. No? God's bra- Jesus on the cross breaks us the wall. There is no wall. The veil on the temple, no? the temple is, not, is no longer divided. Nothing dividing us uh, from God. Um, so our ransom was of so high price. And for conclude, um, so we talked about sins. We talked about bad things, no? Sometimes our choices, okay. But these things cannot determine, determine our, uh, our, ourselves, our identity. We are determined by God's love and God's mercy. And God is expert in changing badness into goodness. I think in this time of pandemic, all of us, we talked a lot about changing, about looking goodness in badness, no? Look, trying to find good things in bad situations. God is expert in changing 
bad situations in goodness. God is expert in changing this grace in grace. This grace in grace. On the gospel we can read, where sin abounded, the grace abounded much more. Where sin abounded, the grace abounded much more. You know? So we are free. We are free to choose God, free to choose Jesus. What is your desire? What is our desire? Our desire is to leave the jungle. It's to go back to the garden. It's to leave the jungle, to leave the cows, and to go back to the garden. No? And we can do this just if we open ourselves to Jesus. Who is Jesus on the gospel? <laughs> Now I conclude, really? This is very, very beautiful. Very, uh, echo. so very, very beautiful. When Mary of Madeleine on the Sunday of the resurrection goes and finds the, the, and finds the empty tomb, no? he met, she met who? Jesus, but he thought, she thought it was a gardener, no? Jesus is a gardener. Jesus is the gardener that can bring us again, bring us back to the garden, no? Jesus, in that moment, was working on her and on all of us through his resurrection, his salvation, to bring us back to the garden, to the garden, and sins have no power upon us anymore. So may God give us this grace of go back to the garden, not by our only own strength, but by his work, his graces, you know, his uh, action. May God bless us all into this way of holiness and make us and, and make may him prepare us, uh, prepare us to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I, it's done. I've done.